Man, I feel like it has been months since I've done a video. It hasn't. It's only been a few days. Anyways, hope you guys all had a fantastic July 4th holiday. I had a really good one as it took a long time to recover, plus I entertained a guest. So it was definitely a wild ass week. I know you guys haven't seen a video from me in a while, but you're going to get one today. There wasn't a whole lot of shit that happened while I was gone. Let's be honest. You guys are still jerking each other off over this fucking surveillance video, which I'm not even sure is legit we'll talk about that a little bit in today's video but also also the only other thing that occurred was it was this secret hearing guys i've jotted some things down I don't think Brian Koberger can or will be found guilty if we do this shit properly. Today, I'm going to go over these things, and I want you, the commenter, or you, the YouTuber, or whatever the fuck you are, to prove me wrong. Change my mind, like Steven Crowder says. Change my mind. I'm JB Gunner. This is Crime Time. Let's go ahead and get on into it. Let's do it. Well, what's going on, everybody? As you guys know, I'm JB Gunner, and this is Crime Time. Hope you all had a fantastic holiday. I know I sure the fuck did. Took a lot of time off. Before we get into this, though, I want to say first and foremost, thank you to everybody that supports the channel, regard or any of my channels, regardless of the method you choose, whether it's Cash App, Patreon, Venmo, PayPal. Truth is, guys, I couldn't do this, nor would I do this each and every day as often as I do without you, the Gun Squad. You guys are what makes this thing go. Thank you guys so much, and if you too find my content valuable, Feel free to hit the links down below. Support the channel. That's what keeps this thing going. Despite what some YouTubers that say, where they will act as if we're supposed to do this shit for free. And I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. And no, it's not a shot at my boy, Harsh. I love Harsh with all my heart. But I feel like he goes back and forth. Like, for him as a retired person, um, I believe he said he was retired. Um, he, him and his wife do very, very well. I can understand kind of why he goes back and forth should i get paid for this should i not get paid for this should i get the answer is yes harsh the answer is yes you pour time into this the answer is absolutely you should get paid most importantly so should everyone else you pay you pay your fucking cable company you pay every other person that entertains you why not why not this field because there's dead motherfuckers involved so what so is horror movies I'm just saying, I saw a video this morning where somebody was talking about some woman, which I don't know this YouTuber, but some woman that was uh, putting uh, autopsy photos on her Patreon and people acted like that was a fucked up thing. Ladies and gentlemen, not everybody is in this community to try to act like we're uh, Spider-Man and shit. Some of us get into the macabre. Some of us get into the game of Clue. Some of us enjoy the process. Not all of us thinks we're Inspector Gadget and shit. I'm just being dead honest. I enjoy horror movies. I enjoy murders. I enjoy this type of content. Not because I want to save the world, but because I enjoy it. It's not that hard to understand. And if you enjoy or are entertained by not just me, fuck me, any content creator out there, yes, I think you should pay them just like you do your Netflix. I'm being dead honest here. And so, Harshi, uh, I just want to say to you, love you, my brother, and you've tipped me, you've paid me, so I'm just being honest with you, man. I know you go back and forth with it. One minute you're buying me a coffee and your merch store is up, the next minute it's not. Look, bro, if you are doing that battle within yourself, I get it, do you, I'm going to do me, everybody does themselves. But it's always disheartening to me when I see YouTubers act as if YouTubers shouldn't get paid. And look, if the dummies over there on Tyler Feller shit is throwing money at his choo-choo train and shit, let him do it. I mean, we could say some shit about it and say how ridiculously um, awkward and cringy it is. But I ain't going to try to stop that man's grind. I ain't going to try to stop his hustle because whoever's throwing money at the choo-choo train, they clearly feel that he is worth that money. And that's the thing about capitalism, baby. The market dictates your value. If, if, you, if, if the followers of this type of content only wanted to watch soup kitchen free YouTubers and shit, then that's exactly what they would go do. I'm just being dead up and honest with you, bro. And to anybody else that's out there, why is it that every other entertainer is expected to get paid for their entertainment that you enjoy 
But for some reason, when a YouTuber gets paid for it, they're a grifter. I don't even think most of you motherfuckers know what grifting means. Grifting is when you are selling an idea. That if you, for instance, I'm a Pepsi drinker. Pepsi Zero, of course. I'm not, if I came on here promoting Coke and shit, then, I would, then that would be grifting because I don't really drink Coke. Do you see what I'm saying? Anyways, I just wanted to throw that out there. But shout out to Harsh. And we're going to get into all this here in just a second. I've still been watching your videos daily, Harsh. Um, but I understand that you go back and forth with yourself with the money thing. I get it. And look, man, some people, you if you're retired, you have all day to sit here and be friends with these motherfuckers and want to make videos just for their entertainment. But most people have another job or this is their job and they ain't got time or the energy. Like, I'm going to be honest. If I didn't make no money, you wouldn't hear shit from me. I don't want to be y'all's friends that much. Unless you're sucking my dick. I don't want to be your friends that much. I don't know you motherfuckers. That's the truth. Anyway, but you should make it because you, you, you're you passionate about I'm not passionate about talking about true crime with you motherfuckers. I'm just being dead honest. Anyways. I, I like getting my opinion out there, but I'm not so passionate. I want friends from like Australia and shit. Like that seems a little weird. We, we, I can't meet you. I can't fuck you. So why would I need to be a friend? It doesn't really matter to me. Anyways, let's get into this. Today, what we're going to be talking about is this footage. This is going to be more of a rant than it is a video about anything because there's no real news. Everybody is still ranting and raving about this fucking Footage. In case you don't know what we're talking about, we're talking about the surveillance footage that I showed you a little bit of last week, and well, we kind of went on about. Look, man, this footage doesn't prove nothing, even if it is real. But I'm going to be dead honest with you. You need to ask yourself who would have leaked the footage because that we've had a bunch of footages and audios leaked prior, and they all were debunked and they were all fake. Why is it that this particular footage, everybody's like, yeah, that's the real footage? Footage of what? We don't even know for absolute sure if that's even the, the area. And we don't know for absolute sure if it's the night or the time. And all we know is it's a little corner area where you see a white car. We don't know if that white car is an Elantra. We don't know anything. And I, don't, I, I challenge any of you to be able to zoom in what technology you could use and tell me the technology you could use to determine what type of car that was. I'm being dead honest. If that's the footage that they are they're going on, then that doesn't prove anything. And I understand you're saying, but there's a date and time stamp. That could be over. I could do that right now. I could overlay of a date and a time, just like you see me overlay this shit down here. I could overlay a date and time stamp on any video at any point in time. However, let's just say it is legit 100% from that night. What does it prove? There clearly was a DoorDash order. Do you do not think that in a night that they could possibly get lost and going in there? Does the vehicle prove that Brian Col that all right, A, does the vehicle prove that it's Brian Kohlberger's? We don't know that because the videos, the other images that we've seen from leaked videos shows that the car has a sunroof. Now, I know some people will say that doesn't really matter. Of course it does. If the car we're looking at isn't the goddamn car that matches Brian Kohlberger's, then the fucking footage don't... Actually, that would be good for the defense. But let's go back to the footage for just a second. Who would leak the footage? Who has the ability to leak the footage? Let's check. The people with the, at the apartments, right? Isn't that who, who got the footage? The, the, isn't their apartment right there, apartment complex? So the owners of the footage. And then... Law enforcement. So either A, law enforcement leaked it, B, the prosecution or defense leaked it after discovery of the footage, or C, um, what is it, the owners, the prosecutors or defense, or law enforcement. Who do you think leaked it? Who would it benefit to leak it? What does the footage prove? That a white car was seen? Maybe Okay, I'll give you that, the white car. Are we sure it's an Elantra? And more importantly, are we sure it's Kohlberger's? Because that's what we're going to get it into. That's what we're going to talk about today. Because we're going to talk about why I believe Brian Kohlberger, not that he's innocent, but why he will be found 
innocent, why he will be found not guilty. These are the things we're going to talk about. But I do want to touch on something before we move on, because I saw a comment in my comment section that said, you think Brent Kopaka did it? I, I, I don't know. I don't think so. And even it was even crazier because they were like, what about his friend? Why would I think his friend did it? Because his friend and Brent, and Brent Kopaka, they love horror movies. I love horror movies. I love horror movies. What the fuck does that mean? I got, I got, I mean, I got, I, man, that, that doesn't mean anything. But he likes Michael Myers. I like Michael Myers. He likes Freddy Krueger. I like Freddy Krueger. He likes Stephen King. I like Stephen King. If we convicted people just because they were horror fans or because they have um, a collection of horror memorabilia, goddamn everybody would be convicted. Not everybody watches The Notebook like a fag. I'm just being dead honest. Some of us like horror movies. You said fag, Jamie. Yeah, go, I ain't got time for you snowflakes, all right? Not everybody sits here and watches punk ass movies. Some of us only watch horror movies. I don't watch action movies. I don't want to see Arnold Schwarzenegger jump off a building onto another building. That's gay to me. I don't want to see your love stories unless, unless it's your head down and showing love why I got to watch this fucking movie with you. I only watch horror movies when it comes to movies, only. And so this weird belief, right? That because Brent Kopaka or his friend enjoyed horror movies, that ain't necessarily saying anything. I want to make that clear. And I also want to throw this out there. Because most of the time, whether it's crime, the crime, the drippity drop, or, or me or anybody else, most of the time when people are trying to, when people are trying to insert Brent Kopaka into this, notice that it ties in Brian Koberger. To believe Brent Kopaka had anything to do with this, and I'm not saying he didn't because he might have, means you concede to the fact that Brian Kohlberger had something to do with it. Because think about it. You're, every connection that's being made, like them two in Pennsylvania, then them two now, uh, did Brent and Brian, were they out together doing drugs or whatever the case? Every single thing that implicates Brent Kopaka also implicates Brian Kohlberger. So, and I'm, because I don't necessarily believe Brian Kohlberger did this, or he, that, it leads me to not believe Brent Kopaka did this. Because if Brent Kopaka did this, I'm going to be honest with you, I think that means Brian Kohlberger also did this. I believe if one's involved, the other's involved, if that one is Kopaka. Now, all I'm saying is, because think of everything that's being used to mention Brent Kopaka. It is his ties to Kohlberger or his alleged or uh, assumed ties to Kohlberger. We're going all the way back to Pennsylvania and all this shit. Yes, it's all ironic, the whole Pennsylvania thing. Then they end up in the same, in the same place in Washington. Then in the same week, Kohlberger basically uh, heads on back to, to uh, Pennsylvania. Kopaka gets killed by the, by the SWAT team. I 100% understand that all looks goofy. But what I am saying is that for me to believe Kopaka is involved means that I have to believe Koberger was too, which is still possible. It is still possible. But for me, I don't believe this. Um, I, 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 I'm going to tell you why, because I don't see the motive. And this is going to lead off to where we're going next. Well, where we're going next is we're going to get to talking about Brian Kohlberger, is he guilty? Is he not guilty? Uh, why I would say he's not guilty. All right, let's start off with the number one thing that you typically look for when you're talking about a murder. When you're talking, because here, I want you to think about this. We're in the courtroom. The prosecution's hammering at home. You're instructed as a jury that he, going into this case, is innocent until proven guilty. He starts off with a clean slate. Brian Kohlberger, on day one of trial, goes in with a clean slate. So what, one of the things they're going to try to do is establish motive. Motive is a reason for doing something, especially one that is hidden and not obvious. Okay, Have we heard anything at all other than Stephen Gonzalez saying he was jealous of him? We haven't heard any potential motive between Brian Kohlberger, any, anything at all. 
as a potential motive for Brian Kohlberger. Other than y'all people who still, for some reason, claim he was an incel, think that somehow he was rejected by these people. But the defense court court proceedings, the defense motions already states there's no connection between Kohlberger and the victims. So you guys' theory that Kohlberger was stalking Kaylee or, or Maddie, it's not true. It's simply not true. Where's that information coming from? Right now, there is no link that we know of to establish a motive or any type of connection to the victims. Your incel theory, out. Your stalking theory, out. The thing where you believe he has IDs at his house, well, the victims, out. It's all out, 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 out. Currently, there is no potential motive that we know of and there is no connection whatsoever as per the court papers with, between Brian Koberger and the victims. We heard on Dateline even, the Dateline openly say that the ID thing was false. He did not have victims' IDs at his house. Then let's move on to the next thing, which is murder weapon. There is no, absolutely no murder weapon. We don't even know. They could sit and, I, we look, man, we don't know for sure that a K-bar knife is even what killed these people. Yes, there's suggestions of that. Obviously, the police have honed in on this. But do you think that's for, from the wounds? No, it was because of the K-bar knife sheet that was left there, that was there at that house. So we have absolutely no murder weapon. We don't know for sure that a K-bar even did the shit. No murder weapon found, no murder weapon seen. There's not even no absolute proof that Brian Kohlberger, yet, remember I'm saying yet, owned a K-Bar. But even if he did, I mean, that, that's normal for Pennsylvania-type dudes up there hunting whatever it is that they're doing. It is, it is possible, which, of course, he was a vegan, so he probably wasn't hunting. We don't know what his reason for being a vegan was. Remember, he used to be fat. He may not, have, he may not give two fucks about animals. He may just have realized that veganism is what keeps him thin. Maybe that's the reason he's a, a vegan, because he just didn't want to be fat no more. So we have no murder weapon. We have no motive at all that we know of. Keep in mind, these are things we do not know of. We have absolutely zero, zero physical evidence that he committed the crime. The only thing that we have is circumstantial evidence, which is touch DNA on a knife sheath. We have no clue when he touched that. That does not put him at the scene of the crime. It puts something he's touched in his life at the scene of a crime. Because let me also show you this, okay? How long does it, is it known? How long, how, even touch DNA is known to last for two weeks outside and six weeks or longer inside. Okay? So touch DNA, that could have been there for fucking over a month. Let that sink in. The touch DNA could have been there for over a month. And let me also make this clear about touch DNA. You can look at this Forbes article right here and it says, framed by your own cells, how DNA evidence imprisons the innocent. It says the humans shed DNA continuously. The shed DNA transfers freely between free people and objects. There is no definitive reason. There is no definitive, there is no definitive uh, uh, evidence. DNA, like if he had touched DNA inside the house, that would make sense. But it wasn't. It was on an object inside of the house. There was no DNA on a door that we know of, right? There was no DNA on the bed that we know of. There was no DNA anywhere in, of Brian Koberger's inside that house with the exception of a, a single cell touch DNA on the knife sheath. Now, is that damning? Yeah, of course it is. But is it proof without a, without a shadow of a doubt? Because that's what you need to convict this man. There is no other physical evidence. Their DNA is not in his car, home. No DNA from the victims is in his car, home, workplace, or parents' house. None that we know of, right? Well, remember, I'm only going off what we know of right here, right now. There's absolutely none of that. 
Inside that home that we know of, there is no Brian Koberger DNA. There's DNA on an object. Understand, if I let you borrow a controller, you now have my touch DNA inside your home, and I'm there, I may not have ever even been inside your home. If I hand you this pen and you take it home with you, or a lighter or anything, there's touch DNA of mine inside your home, and I didn't do shit. Now, granted, it's not on a knife at a brutal sl sl slaying. I, on a knife sheath, I give you that, but the knife sheath is not the murder weapon. Let, let me keep that in, let me say that again. The knife sheath is not the murder weapon. So I'm asking you guys, what physical evidence is there? There's no connections, no weapon, no motive, no physical evidence other than something that he's touched was inside that house. Does not mean he was inside that house when he touched it. You can't put him at the crime scene. The phone pings does not put him at the crime scene. You can sit and say, but he turned his phone off. Well, it doesn't put him at the crime scene, does it? You don't know if he turned it off or if his phone died while he was laying in his bed. Or if when, he got, if when you guys saw him leave uh, Pullman, Washington, in, in his vehicle, you don't know if he didn't go out into the mountains or woods and do some running. You don't know, and, and his phone was out of service. You don't know that. The phone does not put him there. The, 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 the picture outside the gas station doesn't do it. The video, the surveillance video doesn't do it because you have no clue if that was Brian Koberger or his car or if Brian Koberger was even in that vehicle at all. Remember, we're talking about without a reason, or without, without a doubt. You ha if you're going to send him to death, you have to have actual evidence. There is no witnesses that says Brian Koberger did anything. None. But what about what Dylan said? She didn't say Brian Koberger. She didn't know that. She didn't say that at all. In fact, she thought it was just somebody partying in the house. But yet then she was in frozen shock phase for 18, fuck, 18 fucking years. She, she didn't see shit. She didn't, she didn't say, oh, man, that's Brian. Or at least that we know of, right? There is no video evidence of him committing the crime. We have no video evidence, no, no, no surveillance video of him even at the house. You see a white car, if that surveillance video was right, in the area, but that don't mean shit. There's nothing that puts him directly at the crime scene. Nothing. Just pings 12 times in the months leading up to it at a home eight miles from his house. Ten miles, whatever it was. No connection, no motive, no weapon, no physical evidence whatsoever putting him at the crime scene. No witnesses, no video evidence, no audio confessions, no nothing. There is absolutely nothing that you could use right here, right now to convict Brian Koberger. All you're going off is the, is, is the fact that his touch DNA, a very small amount of it, was on an object that was clearly brought into the home. Not on a fixed object inside the home like the television. An object that clearly could be carried in and out of the home, typically re regularly. It wasn't on the refrigerator. It wasn't on the microwave. I'm asking you guys, prove me wrong. Because if we're because I want you to put yourself in the position of the jury. Don't go with your gut, go with the evidence. Because remember, if you're gonna treat Brian Koberger fairly as a person on trial in the United States of America, his slate is clean. You have to prove him guilty. Think about everything I just said. Where's the evidence? Prove me wrong put forth an actual argument that you believe would convict brian goldberger fairly with evidence and i don't want to hear none of that bullshit well you don't know what all they got jb i've already explained this yes i do
And I've also explained it throughout this video. I'm talking about with the evidence that we have. Prove me wrong, man. Anyways, I know y'all still jerking off over the surveillance video. We, even if the video was accurate. It, do you know it's Koberger? Any evidence is Koberger's car? I know I saw some sunroof shit. I'm curious. Any evidence at all that Koberger's even been there? Just asking. Just asking. Guys, let me know in the comment section what you think about this. It's good to be back. I know this wasn't a news story because we didn't really have shit. But I did do a video on the Rudy, uh, Eric, whatever the fucker's name is. Anyway, I didn't put it on this channel because there was no crime committed in the Rudy, whatever, Fourier, Flarius, whatever the fuck. But uh, I got it on my news channel. Um, if you guys want to check that shit out. I did put it on my community tab here. Um, this is going to be the only video of the day over here. I will be back tomorrow. There's just not a lot of news with this shit, man. So take it, leave it, whatever the fuck you want. Hope you guys all had a fantastic holiday. Appreciate every last one of you. I love you guys. I'm still in recovery mode. And uh, my company's gone now, so I get to relax. And you know how it goes. I love y'all. I will see you next time. If you guys like what I do here and you find my content valuable, feel free to hit the links down below. Show your boys some love. The more y'all do, the more I pop up over here and not over on my news area. Love you guys. Peace out.